Fryer quarterback J.W. Walsh is one of the best quarterbacks in North Texas. He intimidates opponents with his balanced, powerful attack. J.W. is approaching 2,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards for the season, and his touchdown to interception ratio is tops in Class 5A. His success has come from lots of hard work, and there to lead him has been his father and coach, John Walsh. John has coached for 17 years, but now finds himself coaching his son. It's a unique relationship, as you'll learn in this week's Family Affair. I have a lot of good memories of my dad being a coach and, and growing up around around football as, as a little kid. And, and it was definitely a blessing that I had. My dad always he always had me out of football. I always had a football in my hand, and we were always playing catch outside the yard. I think being with my dad being being my coach and, and him, even when I was in middle school or younger, when he wasn't my coach, it, it's always been a, a blessing to come home to, to something to, to talk to about it because it, I've, I've never not wanted to talk about football. So when, when I get to come home, I still get to talk about it. I think coaches' kids' expectations are always higher. They're expected to do right all the time, and they don't always do right all the time, but they're expected of that. I think that helps them grow quicker. He's always been an intelligent football player, and that, that, that's what allowed him to be successful his sophomore year. He wasn't just the fastest that had the strongest arm in sophomore year, but I think he had the strongest, the, the, the quickest brain. You've got a lot of scholarship offers. You committed to OSU. Uh, as your dad being, being your coach, you think that's helped you reach those goals? He's, yes. It, I mean, it has a lot to do with it just because the, my knowledge of the game has been is based off of his knowledge and, and, and based off how much I've been able to learn through him and the way, the way he's taught me when, as I've grown up. And I think he, the, the knowledge I have is because of him and, and it's definitely a huge factor on, on my success. He was honored with the All-American deal two, two weeks ago and uh, he's been doing some things this summer and then we win football games. And uh, I think the biggest thing that, that, that Dad could do is you know, hear your son say, this is what I want to do, this is what I dream about. And for that dream to come true, yeah, as a dad, it's very satisfying. Let me talk a little bit about your season so far then. Uh, you guys obviously moved up from, you were very successful at 4A, moved up to 5A. Uh, has it been what you expected at the 5A level? Yeah, you know, it, yes, because I, I was expecting uh, to be tougher. And week in and week out, it is tougher. There's definitely a shift in, in, in the skill level and the talent level. And, and most like, mostly there's the depth that, that people have, too. It's just, it's incredible. But, the, but I think the way we've been able to, to, to come up and, and play the way we've been able to play is, 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 is incredible. I think that the, the past two years in 4A, we've, we've had experience in making playoff runs and, and had experience in, in, in what we've had to do to, to have success in the playoffs. And, and it's, it's, again, it's 5A, so it'll be different. But I think we, we, we've matured as a team. We've matured, we've matured even more since the season began. And I think that uh, if we can keep maturing and, and, and keep playing at the level we're playing, then uh, we can definitely make another playoff run. And now time for our recruiting update. And with that, we welcome David McNabb, VIPE recruiting expert, author of the weekly McNabb Report. Welcome, David. Thanks for having me. Let's start with J.W. Walsh here. You know, the move up from 4A to 5A, well, he was in a pretty good district last year, especially when you look at quarterbacks, because you had him, he was a junior. Now he's committed to Oklahoma State. All right, you also had James Franklin, who's at University of Missouri now, and Scotty Young is at Texas Tech. Yeah, and <laughs> really, JW is a classic example of kind of how the recruiting process works because we've been watching him in recruiting since he was a freshman. And coming into this year, uh, University of Texas was only going to offer one quarterback, and it was whether it was going to be JW Walsh, whether it was going to be David Ash of Belton, uh, Johnny Manziel of Kerrville Tivy. He was a player, and so everybody only offered one. David Ash is going to Texas. JW is going to Oklahoma State. Johnny Manziel switched from Oregon to Texas A&M. So those guys start coming on the radar really, really quickly, and it's and it'll be even through their college years. Well, who made the right call where? <laughs> yeah. And, the, and the, the colleges have to make the call so early in a kid's high school career. That's what we'll get into today. Is we look some of those risers in the junior class, the class of 20. 12, and there are some you already know about. Jonathan Gray, the running back from Alito, Curtis Reiser, the big offensive lineman from DeSoto, and you got Mario Edwards, the defensive end from Denton Ryan. But let's talk about some of the other guys that are quickly rising. Yeah, there, there's other players that rise, and what happens is those players were playing on varsity as freshmen. So when you've got freshman players starring at big time programs and going to summer camps, they get on the radar pretty quickly. But in this past summer and then the 
last spring evaluations, you're starting to see really the more normal kids who are juniors about to about to hit the varsity. And uh, this year, there's there's always a dozen. Alex De, De La Torre was certainly on the radar at Denton Ryan, but but he's showing the progress. He's jumped up. His teammate Dominique Banks at Denton Ryan, he's showing at the varsity level. You know, during a rough district schedule, he's able to play. You, you see De La Torre right there. Um, you know, and Dominique Banks is a guy number 22 for uh, Denton Ryan. He's not even starting because they've got Mario Edwards at one defensive end, the tie hook on the other side, and yet he he really impressed. I believe at the TCU Combine, didn't he? And that's where he got on the radar. He gets he gets on the radar, and those are two great players, Hooks and Edwards, yeah. and so they're rotating in him, and Ryan's defense is, is really great. And then a kid for Rich, Richland, Jeremiah Tishomingo, at the state seven-on-seven, seven, I mean, really, hardly anybody had heard of him. And then all of a sudden, you're out there walking, and there's thousands of kids out there. we got some video of him right here. And there's this 6'2", 220-pound <laughs> kid that's covering 5'10", 190 pound wide receivers and he's one of those who's that kid <laughs> kind, of, kind of guys that, that's able to do that and then the next step is well he's a great athlete he can do seven on seven let's see what he does during football coach Weir's a, a ter terrific coach he says you'll like what you'll see with him when you know with the pads on and he's following through this year and uh, so those juniors that are getting ready for 2012 and most of those guys will get their offers as soon as the 2011 class is signed in February. So that's why they're they're important now, because by the end of February, half of those guys will already be committed to sign for the next year. Yeah, I mean, that's why you'll see Texas come up with 15 commitments uh, in February of next year. All right, Skyline High School has long been a hotbed for recruiting. They've got another one that you want to highlight uh, today. Yeah, they, they have several receivers there. There's a guy who's been hurt, uh, uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas Johnson has been hurt, but he impressed a lot during the summer. They also saw him running routes with Mike Davis, who's now a star at Texas over the last couple years, because they don't throw a lot at Skyline, so they have to really be careful. But but he's a guy that everybody's, when he's gotten to play this year and when Skyline's decided to pass, <laughs> they go, that's a guy that we're interested in. All right, and uh, this is your place to get uh, recruiting updates, not only on this year's recruiting class, but even as we've shown you today on next year's recruiting class and uh, David McNabb here on a weekly basis here on Vipe TV. Uh, thanks again for having me. It's fun to talk about all these kids. All right, David McNabb, the recruiting expert here. And when we return, it's time for a Landry Award update and learn how you can nominate your favorite player. Vipe TV continues in two minutes. It's time now for this week's Landry Award Watch presented by GMC. Here are a couple of this season's notable performances. Well, how about Tyler Kirkendall, Frisco Wakeland's quarterback? Another win on Thursday night this week, and Wakeland has qualified for the playoffs with a 7 and 1 record thanks to their quarterback, Tyler Kirkendall. And the running back from Lake Highlands, Desmond Rowland, already has over 1,200 yards rushing and 21 touchdowns on the season. Well, do you have a favorite high school football player in North Texas? Nominate him for the Landry Award by visiting LandryAward.com. Nominations will be accepted through November 18th. Currently, there are more than 85 nominees. Now, in late November, five finalists will be selected, and the winner will be announced on Thursday, December 9th. And how about this? The ceremony will be broadcast live right here on TXA 21. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. We'll be back next week at 1030 a.m. to bring you the best stories in North Texas high school sports. Before we go, we wanted to show you a performance from the McKinney High School Drumline. Have a great day.